When temperature is 0 degrees Celsius, the Fahrenheit temperature is 32. When the Celsius temperature is 100, the corresponding Fahrenheit temperature is 212. Express the Fahrenheit temperature as a linear function of C, the Celsius temperature. All right. So remember, whenever they start telling us two, they basically give us two pieces of data. They tell us that when it's zero degrees Celsius, the Fahrenheit temperature is 32. That's one piece of data. And when the Celsius temperature is 100, the Fahrenheit temperature is 212. Okay. So they basically give us two points on a graph. So let's create a graph. Now, in order to create the graph, we need to know what's on the x-axis and what's on the y-axis. Now here, what's important here is what they're asking us to. So they're saying express the Fahrenheit temperature as a linear function of C. So what they're saying, whenever they say express the Fahrenheit temperature, they mean solve the equation for Fahrenheit in terms of, as a function of C. Okay? So basically, we want to come up with a formula that looks like this. The Fahrenheit temperature will be equal to blah, 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 C's in there somewhere, blah, 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 right? It's F by itself and C's on the other side. So that being the case, you know that this generally has the, um, uh, since they're talking about a linear function, right? We know that a linear function is equal to Y or is Y is equal to MX plus B. So essentially in the problem, the Fahrenheit is the Y value. All right, so let me put that up here. Fahrenheit's the Y and then the Celsius will be the X. Okay, cool. So now what I'm going to do is just start plugging in some points on the graph. So it says when the Celsius temperature is zero, meaning we're going to be, right, we're not going anywhere on this, on this particular x-axis, the uh, Fahrenheit temperature is 32. So why don't we go, so let's say this is about 32. All right, so this point right here that I'm going to plot represents that point. Then it says when the Celsius temperature is 100 now, so we go all the way out to 100 here, the Fahrenheit temperature, and obviously this is not to scale, is about 212. So we're going to plot that point. And now notice, this creates a nice little, well, let me just plot that again. This creates a nice little straight line. Okay. Let me try to straighten that out a little bit. And let's bring it on down. There you go. So notice, these points that were, these uh, values are basically two points. Okay. So now since I know Fahrenheit is my Y and Celsius is my X, so let me just write that down. Fahrenheit is basically going to be the, the y value, the Celsius is basically going to be the x value. Let me write down now the coordinates. So the first point here had a coordinate, an x coordinate of 0, comma 32. And then the next one had a value of 100, comma 212. Now you know anytime you have two points, and they tell you it's a linear function, right, we can find the slope. How? Via the slope formula. So let's start plugging that in, right? So the slope is equal to y2 minus y1 all over x2 minus x1. So why don't we call this our uh, x2, excuse me, this x1, and this will be this will be x1, and this will be y1, and then we'll call this x2, and then this is our y2. Let's start plugging in the numbers. So the slope here is equal to the y2 value, which is about 212, minus then y1 of 32, all divided now by 100 minus 0. Okay, let's do some math now. Let's do the 212, right? 212 minus the 32. What do we get? We get about 180. Okay, there's 180. Divided now by 100. And I'm just going to leave this in decimal form, okay? You might put it in fractional form. It doesn't really matter. Right, I think it's 9 fifths or so. But we can also write this as basically 1.8. Okay, 1.8. So this will be 1.8. And that is the slope now. Okay, this is the slope. All right, that's what we just found. So let me just write a little, you know what, yeah, let me just write a little equals m here again, okay, just to remind me. Now, if you know the slope, and you know, so let's go back to this formula. If you know the slope, and you know a point, meaning it has an x and a y value, you can always find the missing piece, the y-intercept. And that's really what we need now. In order to find the function, we have to define it, it has a certain slope, has a certain y-intercept. That's what defines a function. So now why don't we uh, plug in... Let's move this down. Can I move it? Yeah, why don't we move it over here a little bit, okay? So pick any point you want. I don't care if it's 0, 32, or if it's, uh, uh, yeah, it doesn't matter. The, the easier one to use would probably be the one with the 0 in it, right? So the y there is 32. The slope we found is 1.8. The x value is 0 plus b. And what's b? Easy, right? 32. Now we have our equation, okay? 
So anytime you got to do temperature conversions, you figured out how to do it if you knew those two points, right? If you knew water freezes at zero Celsius and freezes at 32 Fahrenheit and then boils at 100 Celsius and 212 Fahrenheit, you can literally find a formula that relates temperatures. So now if I told you, you know, whatever temperature, it's 22 degrees Celsius, you could tell me what that is in Fahrenheit. That's the whole, that's the whole thing here, right? So now I can basically just plug in the slope and the y-intercept. So y will be equal to uh, 1.8 times x plus than 32. All right, now instead of using y and x, they want us to use Fahrenheit and C. So the Fahrenheit temperature will be equal to 1.8 times the Celsius temperature plus than 32. Okay, now anytime you want to find Fahrenheit, plug in whatever you want for Celsius and you'll find it. So that takes care of that, right? So now, uh, letter A, part of this, right, says find the rate of change of Fahrenheit temperature for each unit change of Celsius temperature. So that's basically what we just did over here. That's find the Fahrenheit change per unit Celsius, okay? So for letter A, that would uh, simply be the 1.8 or 9 fifths value, it doesn't matter. So it's gonna be 1.8 uh, units that the Fahrenheit changes per single unit of Celsius. Okay, so now, all right, great, so let me let me actually just erase some of this stuff now because I really think I just need the formula. I'm gonna clear out a little space, right? So now it says, find and interpret F of 28. Now remember, I really should have in this formula here probably F of C. Okay, so let me just write that again. F of C is equal to 1.8 times the Celsius temperature plus 32. So it says F of 28, they're telling you, right? F of C, the 28 is the Celsius temperature. So basically anywhere in this formula you have C, just plug in your 28. So there's gonna be 28 is equal to 1.8 times 28 plus 32, right? That's what I mentioned before. If you know the Celsius temperature, you can easily find the Fahrenheit temperature. So what we realize is, let's just plug it in. So we get 1.8 times 28 plus 32. It's gonna be about 82.4, look at that, 80. 82.4 degrees Fahrenheit, okay? So F of 28 is 82.4. That is the answer for letter B, okay? Letter B. So now, let's see, we might have to move this a little bit. Maybe give myself a little more space. And now it says find and interpret F of 40. So why don't you try, try this and pause it, right? See if we come up with the right answer. So F of C is equal to 1.8 times C plus 32. And this is nice. F of negative 40 is going to be equal to 1.8 times negative 40 plus then the 32. So what's the Fahrenheit temperature when the Celsius temperature is negative 40? Let's see, 1.8 1.8 times negative 40 uh, plus then 32. So it's negative 40. They're equal, negative 40. So that's the point at which the Fahrenheit temperature equals the Celsius temperature, as you can see. So that's pretty cool. All right. So that takes care of that, ladies and gentlemen. I hope this helped. Uh, thank you for joining me. All right. And uh, yeah, I look forward to doing more problems for you guys. I really do hope this is helping. And uh, yeah, leave a comment if you like the videos. All right. We appreciate it very much. And I hope you take care. Be well.